again, hello everyone. I am uh, Jason Walls from QA Cafe, and uh, we're going to be giving you a webinar today on uh, the Broadband Forum BBF.069 certification program, which is the certification program, the official certification program for Tier 69. Uh, on the call with me today is uh, Joe McEachern from QA Cafe, um, myself. Um, I'm the technical marketing director of QA Cafe and also the uh, the co-chair of the Broadband Home Working Group at the Broadband Forum who uh, who makes Tier 69. And also with me is Lincoln Lavoy uh, from the University of New Hampshire Interoperability Laboratory, and they are the official certification lab uh, for, for the Broadband Forum uh, Tier 69 certification program. Uh, so we will uh, go through a little bit of an introduction of who we are. Uh, then Lincoln is going to go through the certification process with everyone and how it kind of came to be and what you can do to go through certification. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, CD Router, uh, which is the official test tool uh, of the program and how you can get the uh, how you can get the test cases to be able to do them on your own before you go seek certification. So who is QA Cafe? Uh, a lot of you might already be our customers on the call since uh, that was kind of the biggest distribution list that we used. But uh, if you haven't heard of us before, uh, we, uh, we're the leading provider of uh, IP test solutions for broadband CPE specifically. And we do that through our flagship product, CD Router, uh, which has over the time become the industry standard for CPE testing. Uh, and it is being used as the official test platform for the uh, BBF.069 certification program, and you can check us out at our website there. Uh, it, uh, in addition to the things that we're adding for the certification program, CD Router tests over 100 different protocols and, and does a lot of other very cool things when you're testing broadband CPE. So Lincoln will tell you a little bit about the uh, UNH IOL. Uh, hello all, and uh, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, uh, depending on your global location. Uh, so the University of New Hampshire uh, Interoperability Lab is an independent lab. Um, we've been in existence for about 24 years and uh, work very closely with a large number of standards bodies like the IEEE or the Broadband Forum um, to work with companies to develop and provide testing for these network uh, protocols and technologies in order to enable um, interoperability out in the field when devices are deployed. And so over the past year to year and a half, we've been working very closely with the Broadband Forum uh, to develop the certification program for TR69 uh, called the BBF.069 certification program. Uh, and we've also been working with QA Cafe to uh, develop and enable the testing for that program. Uh, and so all of that testing is based on the certification test plan that's now been released by the Broadband Forum. Uh, and Jason is going to walk you through a couple of background of that test plan, and then we'll talk about the certification process. Thanks, Link. So the uh, the certification test plan is published publicly by the Broadband Forum as Abstract Test Plan 69, ATP 69. And the reason for that is uh, we want um, people who are Broadband Forum members to have complete access to the test plan. The abstract version uh, lists all of the test cases and their names and basically the reasoning behind why a particular test case is being done. But the actual metrics and, uh, and procedures are uh, available only to Broadband Forum members and th that's available as Internal Report 69 or IR 69. And uh, that's still going through the final steps of being published and should be available shortly. Uh, so how many tests does it take? Uh, to certify a device for tier 69, as it turns out, it's about 115, and uh, that's all for phase one. And that rigorously tests the, the protocol itself, so everything that's in tier 69, um, including uh, the ACS discovery process and the backoff features and the security features, all of the remote procedure calls, um, that's all done in phase one. Uh, data, mo data model validation is to come in phase two. It's probably not going to be anytime soon. Um, so in phase one, we wanted to make sure that everybody could pass the benchmark of performing the functions of the protocol as specified in tier 69. Uh, it tests both optional and mandatory features. So there are 
a set of tests that must be done no matter what kind of device you are or no matter what you implement. And uh, that just makes sure that you implement the, the basics of tier 69 itself. And then there are a set of tests that are conditionally mandatory or, or optional, which means that uh, if you do support them, um, if you do support that feature, you should say so. And if you do support it, then you must pass the tests that are designated for that feature. Um, so you might, uh, you, you, might, you might have additional functionality that you've built into your device, uh, or your customers might be asking for specific functionality that is optional in the spec, uh, but if if those things are supported by your device, then they have to be tested in order to get the certification. And it can apply to any device implementing tier six and nine. It's not just gateways. So uh, end devices or any of the, any device or stack that is implementing any of the service data models uh, can get the certification. So how is the UNHIOL and QA Cafe working together? Um, like I said before, the, the UNHIOL is the official certification laboratory for the program. And anyone who is seeking the certification has to go through the UNHIOL in order to get listed. Um, the uh, QA Cafe develops CD Router, uh, which is the test platform that the lab is using for performing the tests. And the broadband form itself maintains the list of certified products on their website. And I'll show you the link for that a little bit later. So Lincoln is going to tell you a little bit about certification, why you should get it, and how to go through the certification process. Thank you, Jason. Um, so certification uh, is really, as I mentioned a little bit before, with the goal of the interoperability lab, uh, trying to be help drive interoperability out in the field. Certified products are um, more likely to be interoperable with existing ACS equipment and existing service uh, provider deployments. Uh, and that's really just because the level and depth to which the certification testing um, looks into the uh, device's implementation of the TR69 protocol. Uh, and from that, your customers, uh, the service providers, or you know, potentially even eventually home consumer customers, uh, can have an increased level of confidence or trust in your product because it will is expected to behave as um, designed uh, when it's deployed out in the field. And then the corollary to that too is during the certification testing, if we discover a bug or um, an issue with the implementation, uh, it's very easy to uh, apply a patch, um, work with you to explain what is incorrect, uh, and then basically retest once that issue has been corrected. Uh, and that all just kind of ties into basically maintenance and development of a TR69 implementation or a TR69 stack on a PPE device. Um, and then from a service provider's perspective, uh, TR69 certification is going to be critical uh, in the future as the amount of TR69 products uh, out in the field and being managed in the field are continuing to grow, where you're really going to see um, devices moving beyond what's traditionally only been managed the residential gateway. Um, you're starting to see TR69 being pushed out into the home further uh, to set-top boxes or voice over IP devices or any other number of CPE implementations. Uh, and as service providers are rolling out um, more and more devices, it, it just is going to become critical to be able to have a benchmark uh, to basically know which devices are already tested into a certain specific level and expected to behave appropriately when connected to the ACS. Um, and this all ties into a reduction in the testing time that a service provider um, or an ACS vendor might have to do in order to do a system integration or to, you know, pre-deployment testing uh, or anything along those lines. And again, tying back, that, that really just continues to increase the confidence that the device is going to behave as expected or as designed uh, when it's deployed in the field, especially when it's deployed into like a customer premise uh, where, you know, it would be a truck roll and a scheduling thing to be able to get back out and get hands on that piece of uh, hardware again once it's already deployed. Um, and so if you're looking at some of the th types of things that are being tested within the certification program, uh, things such as like security with SSL and TLS uh, are being tested as one of the optional features that can be enabled. 
uh, and verifying that you're actually implementing that complete protocol correctly and adhering to uh, checking the common name and then the certificate validity and times and stuff like that, as well as any number of you know both positive and negative test cases, just to again verify that that CPE is a robust implementation of the TR69. So to get started in that certification process, um, the real process obviously begins with the decision to achieve the, the certification. Uh, optionally, um, companies can use their own implementation of QA Cafe's CD router with the BBF.069 um, add-in to pre-test their product internally and, and do any bug fixes that they might discover. Uh, the company would then submit the CPE and the firmware to the UNHILL for testing. Uh, as part of that process, we will work with you to um, collect any information that we need, such as the uh, optional features or the conditional features that may be supported on the CPE, uh, as well as asking any questions that we may uh, have coming up about how the CPE connects to the network, whether it's a DOCSIS device or a GPON device or a DSL or an Ethernet. Um, or even just a straight LAN device that is uh, not connected directly to a WAN. Um, once we have all that information, we'll begin uh, the testing process. Uh, barring no major issues with the device, uh, testing usually takes about seven business days to complete. Um, and during that time, we'll actually be completing and doc uh, documenting a set of results and reports um, on the device for the, the company. Uh, if we do discover an issue during that time, we will work directly with you and contact you immediately to begin a debugging process uh, to see what's going on um, inside the, the device. And then once we've completed the testing, we'll provide a detailed report and a set of results to the company uh, in order for them to either uh, go back and, and fix any bugs that may be uh, discovered during the testing. Uh, or for passing results, uh, we'll work with the company to help submit the product uh, to the broadband forum for the final certification, uh, which includes uh, getting you know, the ability to use the certification logo and branding, as well as the inclusion of uh, the product information on the uh, website list that the broadband forum will maintain. Uh, that service providers can then go out and look at to see which CPE devices and which companies have certified products. Um, and so as we've mentioned, we are relying on the CD router uh, test tools for performing the testing along with a set of scripts that we've developed. And so Jason's going to kind of provide a little bit more of an overview of the CD router tool. Thanks, Link. So, uh... The uh, CD router, like we said, is being used by the, the lab for the certification. So it's the actual CD router platform. And uh, the uh, UNH IOL has developed a set of scripts to perform that certification. And CD router customers can have access to those scripts uh, for their own implementation of CD router if they have that. So uh, like we said, CD router, it's being used for it. It's the industry standard in CPE test tools. Uh, it's used by a majority of the CPE vendors and service providers. You can take a look at our, our customer list. Um, and in addition to the stuff that we're doing for tier 69, uh, you know, there's our, our tier 69 baseline uh, add-on, there's add-ons for IPv6, and we test over 100 different protocols uh, in, in the full set of test suites that CD Router supports. In addition to the ability to script your own uh, test cases and make modifications uh, for your specific uh, needs. So for those of you not familiar with CD Router, the setup kind of looks like this. Uh, CD Router simulates both the WAN side and LAN side connections uh, to, to a CPE. So you connect both of those up to, to CD Router. Uh, and then, so it'll simulate hosts on the LAN side and do a bunch of other things. And uh, it'll simulate all of the services and, and WAN connection uh, stuff necessary in order to, to have a, a simulated network environment. And then it runs and performs all those tests. And if you have a device that requires some sort of access concentrator uh, in order to uh, go through it, so like a, either a CMTS or a DSLAM uh, or, a, uh, or an OLT, then uh, you can hook it up through that access concentrator on the WAN side and, uh, and, 
and hook up your CPE to CD router on the on the LAN side, and everything will work kind of the same way. So if you have any specific interfaces that you need to test, and you have the equipment to be able to do that, CD router will still support it. Uh, so the scripts themselves were were written by uh, UNH IOL on the CD router platform, and they're available through the BBF.069 add-on. They're the exact same scripts used and maintained by the lab. Um, and those are not changeable. So we want to make sure that people are running exactly the same test cases that the lab is using so that they can more accurately do pre-testing and regression testing. So the, the certification, when you look at the list, um, applies to a very specific firmware version. So you'll see that it applies to a specific company with a specific device model and firmware version. So if you need to get recertified, um, you'll have to, if, if you do a, a firmware update that ends up changing the tier 69 stack, you'll have to get it recertified. Um, so you'll be able to, uh, with, with the CD router scripts, you can do that pre-testing and do that regression testing on your own uh, before you send it off to UNH IOL to make sure that there's not any major problems. Um, and in the end, like we said, the testing still must be performed by the BBF approved lab to achieve the certification. So Joe is going to give you a little bit of a demo uh, of CD router and uh, how the BBF.069 scripts are integrated into it. So some of you may have seen this before if you have CD router. And uh, if you don't, then uh, this will be new information for you. Thanks, Jason. Uh, it's Joe McCachron here. Just going to take you through a quick demonstration of what it's like to actually run some of the tests in the BBF069 add-on. And let me just exit out of our slides here and pull up a, a browser. So what you're looking at here is the web interface for CD router. We call it Buddy Web. Um, it's one option for running tests in the CD router environment. Uh, you also can run tests directly on the command line as well. So we have customers that do uh, command line type testing, and we have others who use Buddy Web uh, and do their testing through the web. Uh, what's nice about this, if you are using BuddyWeb um, and you're doing some BBF069 testing and you're also doing it at the IOL as, as well, um, you'll be able to share results very easily. So they could run a test, um, send it to you, and you could import it into the system and see exactly uh, what they're doing. Uh, just to cover a couple of quick concepts here, if you've never run CD Router uh, before, there is a configuration file that CD Router uses. And I'm just going to open, we have a configuration wizard. And what that configuration file does is describe the device that you're testing. It tells CD router about that device, whether it has a LAN interface, whether it has a WAN interface, what the protocols in use are. Um, for TR69, CD router has a built-in ACS. And you would go in and configure um, the IP address of where that ACS is running and really the whole setup. So this configuration file really controls all of your testing that happens. We also have the concept of a package. And a package is a test package. It, what it does is it combines three things. It combines that configuration file. It combines test cases that you would select. And then it combines runtime options, like how you want to run those test cases, how many times, uh, whether you want to repeat them, run them in different orders. Uh, so you combine these three things, configurations, tests, and the runtime options, and that creates a package that you can then use. So I'm going to just do a quick demonstration here on the BBF um, add-on. And what you'll see is when you look at our test selection, um, CD Router has a core set of tests. I'm just going to expand the CD Router section here. Um, and then we have additional add-ons for functionality. And we're distributing this new BBF069 um, set of tests from the IOL as a new add-on. So what you would see in this section, if you have this enabled in your license, these new tests would appear. Um, as Jason mentioned early, earlier, there are some of these tests that are fully automated, and some of these tests have a manual mode. Um, all the manual mode means is that during the test case, um, some type of interaction with the device is required. Uh, a common thing would be connecting into the, the management interface and causing an action to occur, for example, something like that. And those kind of manual tests can be run in CD Router's pause mode. And in pause mode, CD Router will actually stop at a certain point during the test, prompt you, 
either through the CLI or through the web interface to do some specific action. So those tests are run a and do require some uh, manual interaction, but the core group of tests here, I'll just select this, can be run in a fully automated fashion, just like your existing CD router test cases. So if you've run a CD router test case before, these are gonna look familiar. Um, there's the test name and then a description about the test. Uh, I'm not gonna run them all here. I'm just gonna run a couple of the, the really simple ones that are very uh, quick to run here for the demo. Um, so let me just grab a get parameter values test and a get parameter names. Why don't we do a, why don't we just do some get parameter names test? So here we'll do a complete path and an invalid path test. So this is how one, one way you can actually select test cases. Um, and we're just going to run these once. We'll just create a new package. Um, just call it my demo. And I'm going to select a configuration file. You'll see I have lots of configs here. This is a system I use uh, quite often. Um, but this configuration file is already set up for the device that I'm connected to. So I'm connected to a um, DSL-based uh, CPE that has a TR69 stack in it. So I'm just going to create this package. And I'm just going to hit launch here and start up a sample test. So while this is starting, I actually have CD router set up to automatically restart uh, the device I'm testing. So it's actually gonna power cycle that. I have a uh, power controller uh, connected up to the CPE device. When CD router first starts, there is what we call a start phase. And that's a little bit of a bootstrapping where we'll bring up any WAN um, protocol that's happening on the WAN side of the device. And we'll bring up one LAN interface uh, if we're talking to a a router type device. Now these TR69 tests are not specifically dependent on having a gateway style device. Um, you can also run these against uh, set-top boxes or other sort of one-armed kind of TR69 devices. And we have documentation on how to do those types of setups as well. What you'll see while CD router is running, we have a log file over on the right-hand side. And we also have capture files for both the LAN and WAN interface. So if you want to just look at straight up capture files of any test case, you can do that. Or you can look at our um, test analysis as well. So this test should be starting in, in just a second. And I'll, I'll take a quick look of the actual log file here. Um, while we're doing that, um, one of the things that will be familiar uh, if you're using BuddyWeb, all the test cases are documented right inside of the web interface. Um, so you can see the test description and the test steps and any test metrics. What you'll see with the IOL tests is the test metrics or for the VBF tests here, these test metrics are actually called out in the log file. So there'll be specific pass fail indications that map back to the test metrics. So it's very clear to see why a test is failing or why a test is passing. So we go back here. So this probably finished while I was showing you the, the test names here. So let's take a quick look at a test case here. What you'll see on the left-hand side, these green check marks, those just indicate passes. If a test had failed, you would see uh, a red X indicating a failure. Um, if you had a number of tests here, I just have these two test cases, uh, you'd see multiple pages. I'm just gonna highlight uh, page one here. Uh, you would see additional pages. So you might have thousands of test cases uh, if you were looping tests. Um, so this is just showing a real simple example. But let's just click on the log file. And so this is what a CD router test case looks like. And this is an example of one of the BBF069 test cases. You can see that what we provide is a commentary of log messages. We also provide um, one-line summaries of each packet that is sent and received. Uh, we can drill down into packets and view them right here uh, in the test run itself. Uh, and we're also giving you protocol information. So our protocol stack here is our ACS um, can provide a lot of detailed information about what is happening. So sometimes this is a lot of information and it's best to start by filtering some of this. So in the upper right hand corner, I'm just gonna change the filter level here. Just look at log only. 
and just really look at a shorthand uh, representation of the test here. So this particular test is just doing a get parameter names uh, on the device using a specific complete path, uh, parameter path. And what you'll see is that parameter is returned and it's verified. And there is a metric line here that indicates the pass of that test. That metric maps back to the other metric um, that's in the test description as well. So this is a very straightforward test. Now, if we wanted to explore, like show the packets and I'll show all the log messages here, you could start to look at how this test actually worked. Uh, like some of these existing tests, the, the ACS will make a um, connection request to the CPE to start a new session. So what you see here is that happening. I'm just going to highlight a few things. Here's a, here's a very common uh, test process here where here's a get sent to the connection request uh, URL. The response is requiring authentication. Here's a second attempt. Um, this time the authentication is provided. The result is okay. So you see a 200 okay HTTP response. And then the CPE device starts to initiate a new session here. So if I scroll down now, you'll see an inform actually arrive from the device. So if you've used CD Router before, running these BBF069 tests, it's, it's going to be the same type of process. You'll be able to leverage your knowledge of the CD Router platform, um, how you debug tests, how you work in that environment, and really be able to start running these tests with pretty, pretty, pretty easily. Um, in order to get the, if I go back here, In order to get the actual tests installed, what you'll see here on your license file, the BBF069 add-on is a new component. Uh, so once you have that enabled on your license file, uh, there will be an additional component to download and install from us. And once you do that, these new tests will show up uh, under the BBF069 um, testing area within CD Router. So that's the quick demonstration to give you a sense of what it's going to be like to be running these tests as part of CD Router. Uh, I'm going to turn things back to Jason now. Thank you, Joe. So just to quickly summarize and kind of put everything together. Uh, if you want to learn more about the certification, uh, contact the UNH IOL, and so you can email either uh, T Tim Sheehan or Lincoln Lavoie uh, at their, or or just uh, hit the the info address at uh, iol.unh.edu, and they will give you all of the information you need to know about going through the certification process and uh, signing up for certification and uh, getting you to go through that. Uh, if you want to know how to obtain the uh, CD Router test platform and how to get the BBF. 069 test scripts, you can contact us at sales at qacafe.com. And if you want to see the list of certified devices, that's that's the link for that right there. Um, currently, the uh, all of the devices that have gone through beta, with the exception of a couple, the, 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 the beta of the, of the test program, with the exception of a couple that are just finishing up their paperwork, are listed on that on that page. And pretty soon, everyone who went through the beta and passed uh, will be listed there. Um, so that's what uh, that's what it'll look like if you are if you get the certification and you're listed. Uh, you have to be a broadband forum member in order to remain listed on that list.